Welcome back to True Jordy Extra. Subscribe if you're new. Today it's UFC 281. Alex Pereira wins the title of Israel Adesanya. I had Israel Adesanya on the podcast. One of the coolest fucking guys you'll ever meet. Massive for a middleweight as well. So tall. To have two losses against Pereira in kickboxing and then for him to come back over, you've got your chance of revenge. You're always going to have that in the back of your head. And I think it was in his head a lot for this fight. Here we go, round one for the other. No fucking fear from Pereira. No one fights Adesanya like that. Is he's gonna have to check some kicks? There was a real opening there with Pereira's sort of slightly square on stance to just hit him straight down the middle. And is he exploited that there? There you go, again. Good low kick by Izzy. Yeah, I'm just thinking when I look at these guys, right? When you think of how massive Adesanya is, I can't stress this enough, how on earth he makes middleweight. And yet, next to Pereira, he looks like a weight class below him. So what the fuck Pereira does to make this weight? He must deplete himself so much. And you see later on in this fight how depleted he does look when the grappling starts happening. If you get a good grappler in there with Pereira and he can't land on him, you're fucked. And he landed a big knee. <laughs> I've already seen this fight and even still my mouth is fucking wide open man because Izzy had him fucking hurt so badly there Pereira didn't show him enough respect Izzy drills him and I just feel like if he capitalized on how careless Pereira was a little bit more in that first round he may have fucking got him out of there if he had just gone for it a bit earlier the whole result of this fight could have been so different Pereira trying to get his wits about it's very rare a fighter is that hurt and actually manages to win a fight after that. So you got to give credit to Pereira's chin, because fuck me. You never know. Oh, good left to the body by Pereira. The skills these two have is fucking beautiful. Oh man, the jab is stiff. Izzy does this a lot against other fighters. He backs up, he's on the fence, he's making you miss, he's catching you, he's playing the defense game. And if I'm being brutally honest, a lot of Izzy's recent fights have looked a little bit boring because other people aren't clever enough, don't hit hard enough, and just can't time him like Pereira can. He's too happy to sit on the back foot and to make you miss, but sometimes you've got to switch it up. I mean, he hits so hard, you can hear it when yeah. he lands. Nasty. Even in close. Is he capable of hurting Pereira? He's just letting Pereira lead too much here, in my opinion. As talented as is he. Oh. Seeing that, man. Oh, God. I don't know. How, I, like, the more I watch this, I, the more I don't know how is he lost. Well, I do know, but you know. Oh. Oh. oh, my goodness. Fuck me, Pereira hits hard. Mate, mate, mate. Pereira needs to move to light heavyweight as well. Because that division is so shit. He would be fucking dynamite in that division as well. You see how how tired Pereira is later in this fight? You imagine a Hamzat Chemaev just piling on that pressure. He isn't as big as Pereira, but because he's growing into a middleweight division, instead of depleting down, he's not going to be as drained. He might not look as big and strong as Pereira, but his wrestling technique and him, like, him being like a super huge human wrestler. I think Hamza is like the worst possible matchup for Pereira watching this. What championship medal though from Adesanya after a tough round two? That's what we haven't seen enough of. Pereira against the cage. Is he putting the pressure on? Pereira's had his most success for the body tonight. Oh! oh he has that left hook! Oh god, I don't like watching a fighter. I like get the fuck beaten out of them. Oh! He has that left hook! He heard him back! Oh shit, son. Nah, nah, nah. The more I look at that, was Pereira going in for the kill? Yes, absolutely. Adesanya has been in wars before. You have to let that man go out on his shield. He wasn't done, done yet. He was hurt, possibly going out. You have to let him have that man. I feel like if Izzy gets a little more aggressive and finds the balance, he can still win a rematch against this guy. But what a fucking fighter Pereira is. I mean, he is a scary man in that middleweight division. Like Carla Esposa, Wei Zhang. She's strong, she's fast. I'll never forget Carla Esposa versus Rose Namajunas. It was literally the worst UFC fight of all time. So I kind of was rooting for Zhang in this because she's just so much more entertaining, man. 
Carlet throw, the left hook, Weili lands the jab. Jesus. You can see the power difference there. You see, Weili Zhang has obviously got the better striking and the power especially, but Esparza's relying on grappling and Weili Zhang, from what I remember, has been training with Triple C. So it's really no way out for you at that point because Triple C doesn't fuck around with the wrestling and he's really schooled this girl in how to fucking defend herself and capitalize on it when people make those mistakes. Right, she's allowing... Oh my goodness! Woohoo! Fucking hell. She's got a Jesus, that looks po oh, God, not pleasant. <laughs> not that pleasant at right. all. She's got it, it's it's she looks like the total package now. The wrestling is there. The submissions are there. She's hitting hard. She is going to be really difficult to dethrone now I, only rose nami Yunus when she's like feeling the flow and not in this like mind state that she gets into sometimes where she sort of psychs herself out because she has this like potential that's through the fucking roof but consistency has been a problem whereas Weili Zhang yeah that's exactly what you're gonna get you know exactly what you're getting every fucking time she steps into that cage they should call her the demolition woman I don't know if she's got a nickname but you're welcome. Dustin Poirier versus Michael Chandler. Now, I feel like these are the kind of guys that, like, if you were, like, king of the world or something and you had all the money, you could just say, look, I want you two to fight each other every night for my for my entertainment. Like, these motherfuckers are scrappers, is what I'm trying to say. Fuck me, man. This guy is so fucking entertaining. How many people backed us and Poirier up like that? Last time he fought McGregor, he was backing McGregor up, and Chandler is just putting it on him. In all directions. Oh, Ooh, he hurt him. He fucking hurt him. And again. It absolutely amazes me, right? When you watch Michael Chandler, right? If you're looking at this from a technical standpoint, and I'm I'm a fucking idiot, I'm a nobody, right? What do I know? But even still, if you look at the way Michael Chandler throws a fucking punch, right? Both hands by his fuck in his pockets here, right? Bouncing around, just throws it from the hip, bang gets a reaction again like he just throws it like a fucking hammer there's no it's not like don't telegraph it you know t disguise it as best no he telegraphs the shit out of this doesn't give a fuck You notice that Poria, even in the chaos there, thought, I'm going to whack that body because he has that big tortoise shell belly and you're giving it everything. And if you terrorize his body, he's going to run out of gas super quick because he's, he's a small guy for that weight. So all that explosive power is, is going to drain you when you're getting smacked in the belly. That's it. That's it. Well, Poirier acknowledged the explosion of power. That's my favorite thing about Dustin Poirier, composure. He just doesn't get phased, when, no matter what you're throwing his way. You have to, like, really fuck him up in order to even say it properly. Headbutt. They collided heads there. <sighs> Shit balls. Oh, Poirier's in trouble. He's, hurt back. He's in real trouble. Oh, big right tail. Mate, mate, how on earth Dustin Poirier took all those shots, kept his hands up. You are a fucking man. Oh. Big takedown for Chandler. The problem with Michael Chandler is maximum violence with minimal planning. He doesn't think about how do I navigate this fight in the long term and grow into it and you know if I'm not gonna finish you right now, maybe I'll just calm down, get my breath. Though there's none of that. Look at Poirier come now. Oh, nice oh. from Dustin. Oh. Nah. And that's the difference is Dustin's a maniac with a mind. You know what I mean? He really does think about things and he 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 doesn't lose his cool, whereas Chandler never had a cool to lose in the first place. Back he hit him again. Oh. oh shit! Honestly, yeah. <laughs> this these two fuckers love them. Nah, nah, nah. That was so beautiful. To me, that's almost like romance. Does anyone else get a bit uh, emotional? Just gorgeous. And you could see the resistance to the punches that Poirier had. Chandler doesn't have that same chin. He can't take as much of a beating as he can give, whereas Poirier is, is very good at both. Does Poirier actually squeeze the blood out of him here? No, oh, it's just, uh, it's just coming out anyway. <laughs> Disgusting! I don't even get like that. You know, I used to work in a butcher shop, but fuck me, that is rank. You got Chandler breathing heavy, looking at the clock, Poirier on his back in the third round, knowing he's given everything he can in those first two. He hasn't got much more left. 
and Poirier is, he's weathered the storm and he's choked him out quick. And that is the difference between a tough guy and a tough guy who's a little bit smarter. You know, like they're both amazing. They're both fucking elite level fighters. But I feel like we've just seen the intelligence of Poirier play out there. Chandler clearly has the tools to beat him. He just didn't know how to put it all together. And Poirier just weathered that storm so well. Molly McCann, a bit sad about this one. They matched her up with a 9 and 1, 23 year old. I mean, it, look, Molly takes on all comers, but that's, yeah, that's elite level, isn't it? Molly's a star, man. She's getting the fucking love from the crowd on the prelims. It doesn't even matter. Doesn't matter where she is. It's very rare that you see someone pressure Molly McCann the way Blanchfield is yeah Bran Blanchfield not showing the respect for the power of Molly she doesn't give a fuck she's all over her here she sort of did a Kamzat style game plan where she just didn't give Molly any space to breathe and she's just all over her immediately and uh, with Molly's power she just needs that distance to get it off fully locked up and now Molly's defenseless she really can't do anything here. I don't understand the UFC putting Molly McCann, who's a bona fide star of the UK MMA, in there with some young chick like this, nine and one. Like, if she obviously is a protege, this this girl is like elite level. You want to try and build Molly into giving her a title shot to try and capitalize on all of that. Let her have the title shot and, and then and then give her a girl like this. You know what I mean? Like, I don't understand the UFC's marketing sometimes. It's so fucking short sighted, man. Oh, oh, I don't even like watching this. It's fucking horrible. Oh, she's gonna. Oh, God. Molly is tougher than fucking old boots, man. That arm is. It looks painful right now. My days. Molly, you're a fucking hero. Ah, it's too much. If you want to build someone up against Molly, you want it to be main card, you want this, there to be some sort of stakes online. Like, this is the type of shit that the UFC do, and it's the same sort of logic that's kept John Jones out of an octagon for fucking three, fucking four years, man. They just have no idea how to build a star anymore. I really, honestly, I, I'm convinced of it. So that was UFC 281 reaction. Before I go, I do want to pay respects to Anthony Rumble Johnson, uh, sadly passed away recently at the age of 38 years old, and obviously a nice guy from every account everyone seemed to say how lovely he was and um, ironic because in the ring or in the cage one of the scariest men to ever step foot in an octagon the hardest hitting pound for pound the hardest hitting man who ever entered the octagon in my opinion a light heavyweight who hit like francis and ganu like it was a joke the things he was able to do to people in there and yeah just it's tragic man like uh i really hope that they give him a hall of fame uh, title because the man made epic moments happen and with, with people like that they're once in a, 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 a in a lifetime in, in in mma and boxing like people who can shut the lights off with ease and it's just sad 38 years old real sad man I, I don't even know what to say in a ufc run where he defeated the likes of glover Teixeira, uh ryan Bader, gustafson phil davis i mean Teixeira is still in the fucking title picture now and this man's passed away bless him and he beat so many great fighters easily so yeah uh, sending uh, thoughts and prayers i'm sure all of you fight fans are out there as well the man was an entertainer uh god bless thanks to everyone who watched the video if you uh want to see more fight breakdowns fight predictions let us know in the comments below what you'd want to to be talking about and I'll take it on board but for now thanks for watching I'll see you later